Well, earlier this year, tropical cyclones, torrential rains and floods in towns like Roma, Charleville and St George grabbed national headlines. Deep inland, deserts were inundated with record-breaking falls too. They've brought the desert to life and it's giving scientists a rare opportunity to find out how animals and plants survive the harsh environment. Cathy McLeish joined an ecological expedition into the Simpson Desert. The Simpson Desert is alive with new life. The landscape transformed by an event that's only happened three times in 100 years. We could come back here every year for the next 30 years and not see it like this. It's fantastic. Floodwaters pouring in from central Queensland and torrential inland rain have filled waterholes and wetlands. Some of the animals and plants which have come to life are rarely seen in the desert. Scientists are mounting expeditions to try and learn what they can before the water and the new animals and plants disappear again as they must. This guy's pretty vocal in the morning. That's just his normal good morning noise. Andrew Harper is loading up for a trek on a conservation property called Ithabuka, which covers 213,000 hectares of the desert. Doing it for 15 years now. So, yeah, I don't know... Uh many thousands of kilometres here. Yeah. Despite the advances in the science of conservation, the ships of the desert remain the favoured mode of transport. Even though you could, you know, load these camels blindfolded, every, every day is different, you know. That's the beauty of it. Um, you're seeing different country and you're working with different people, different ecologists. Um, so it's never boring, it's never monotonous, you know, at all. Oh, yeah. 150 years ago, camels were brought to Australia for the expedition by Burke and Wills, and their legendary status remains unchallenged in this terrain. Camels, I believe, are still the best way to explore the remote desert. It's, it's ironic that it's, the circle's turned and we're back to where we were 150 years ago as far as desert um, exploration and documentation is concerned. Yeah. But new technology has its place here too. Solar-powered camel, this bloke, yep. Um, these uh, flexi panels were used to charge the 12-volt batteries that um, power our sat phones and in this day and age our digital cameras as well. Um, so we carry four 12-volt batteries and three sat phones on this trip. So a combination, 19th century and 20th century. Yeah, it's all blended in together, yep. Andrew Harper loads and handles his camels using age-old Afghani traditions. But this is a journey of modern discovery. Good morning, camels. Stand. Stand, camels. Stand, camels. A lot of people raise their eyebrows when they, they, they hear we're doing expeditions out here with, with pack camels because camels are a feral species and it's one of the, the things that we manage out here. But the, uh, in terms of a, a vehicle, um, uh, uh, the, the, the camels are incredible for getting us into really the remote parts of these, you know, these reserves and areas that we just simply haven't got to or surveyed before and um, that's, you know, in terms of understanding the landscape and the dynamics within it, um, it's, it's been really amazing and, uh, you know, the way Andrew and his crew um, run their, run their um, expeditions, it's, it's just fantastic, you know, it's very sleek, very, you know, sensitive in terms of uh, environmentally and um, they've got us to places that we just, you just wouldn't be able to take a, uh, you know, a vehicle to. So the, the method we're using um, uh, for trapping on the sand dunes, as well as out in the in the plains, is a uh, pitfall traps. But it's a good method of, of uh, if there's any critters here, we're likely to, to grab them. So do you almost always... Max Tischler is an ecologist with Bush Heritage Australia. He's monitoring the science of the big wet. These guys are incredible um, 
they spend most of their life buried in the sand and they slough an outer layer of skin and, and it surrounds themselves in this sort of mucus layer and um, you know bury up to you know 50 centimeters into the ground and they just lower their metabolism lower their heart rate and um, and, and go into this torpor uh, awaiting for the next the next rainfall event and then they'll emerge again and and uh, spend their time like this guy is hopping around the dunes feeding and, and breeding if there's freestanding water around. Ether Booker is his turf. He's been coming here as a researcher for a decade. But until now, he's only seen the dry side of the boom-bust cycle that typifies this country. It's really stunning. I've, I've been coming out here for a number of years, but n haven't seen anything, anything like it. And so, you know, we, we're, we're in, the, in the, the landscape and everything is just seems to be abundant you know we're down in the water holes we've got huge numbers of fish you know big productivity in the in the in the river system all the birds that are flocking to flocking there and then out on on these sand dunes you know we're getting new animals turning up um and everything seems to be you know uh, just you know, prolific He's here to find out more about the boom times. We've got a, a great uh, a great depth of knowledge in, in, in what's here. Um, extending that, extending that uh, research into you know, a complementary study and, and looking at, at, at what's in the floodplain is really important to understanding uh, you know, where these animals and, uh, are and, and how they respond under, under different types of conditions because, of course, in boom years, they seem to spread out across the landscape. But in the dry times and when the resources drop, they'll all shrink back to you know, these small, uh, what they call dry time refugia. And as far as management goes, understanding where the animals are coming from, what they're doing in a good season and where they're going to shrink back to in a dry season is, is really critical. Today the traps have captured a tiny but very exciting discovery. This um, looks to be um, a desert short-tailed mouse and we haven't caught one on the reserve um, until about, um, well we caught several about on the last camel trip about a month ago and um, they hadn't been caught here for 18 years. And as far as bush heritage goes, um, trying to work out where those refugias are, the dry time refugias are, is really important to managing these guys so that we, uh, you know, we can... We can uh, stay them in between those. Exactly, exactly, and try and, um, and, try and um, you know, curtail any threats like, um, you know, feral predation by foxes and cats and that sort of thing. Ether Booker is privately owned by Bush Heritage Australia, a non-profit organisation funded largely by public donations. Ether Booker Station covers more than 200,000 hectares in the northeast corner of the Simpson Desert. It's in the middle of arid Queensland. But the east of the property is bordered by the Queensland Channel Country, and that's partly responsible for turning Ether Booker into a wetland. The property connects to the Simpson Desert National Park to the south and to the north its conservation values are extended by the Mulligan River Nature Refuge, Cravens Peak Bush Heritage Reserve and the Toko Ranges Nature Refuge. In all, about 2 million hectares of land in this area is now under protection with the hope of bringing it back to its state before European settlement. The really big thing that we've seen probably uh, since 2007 is that we've had a number of consecutive wet years, uh, 2007, uh, last year and then this big season in 2010. So what we've seen is a, a massive uh, increase in the, in the vegetation. When that vegetation isn't being grazed, uh, it's all going back into the, the native food chain. All that, uh, that grass is going back into the, the native uh, critters. And if the scientists' predictions of another wet season are right, Ether Booker will continue to bloom, at least for a while. And these scientists will be here monitoring. The camels are turned out for the night, and with the day's work done, the timeless rhythm of the desert takes over, just as it did for our earliest explorers.